My name is Carl Fitzpatrick, and I'm here today representing Bricks for Biz, and we facilitate LEGO Series Play here in Ireland. LEGO Series Play is a facilitative thinking, communication, and problem-solving technique that suits all organizations of all sizes, from the not-for-profit to the for-profit, and even teams included also. So I'm going to play just a very short video to give you an introduction into what LEGO Series Play is all about. LEGO Serious Play is an innovative method designed to improve business performance. It encourages group discussion, knowledge sharing, problem solving and decision making through creative play. In a workshop, each person builds their own creation to symbolize their thoughts and opinions about a subject in question. Using Lego bricks as visual metaphors, each and every person is able to contribute by sharing the meaning of their creation through story making, regardless of position, cultural background, or language they speak. As the questions probe deeper, hands become the search engines for the subconscious brain, tapping into the creative minds. Lego serious play is a method that provides a safe way to have a free and honest exchange of opinion. The focus is on the bricks and their meaning, not on the people, so there's no fear of treading on personal feelings. Real issues are addressed. Everyone can contribute to the discussion and to the decision, resulting in an outcome everyone can live with and commit to. Participants come away with skills to communicate more effectively, to engage their imaginations more readily, and to approach their work with increased confidence, commitment and insight. Now, Lego Serious Play is a hands-on, minds-on activity, so I'm going to look for three volunteers to come up and get involved in an exercise with us. Who have we got? One, two, and one more. Where's that? <laughs> now, what we're going to do is we're going to get you to build a duck. A duck. A duck. A duck. A duck. <laughs> now, A duck, each, yeah, of okay, yeah. each of you have six bricks in the bag. Do you mean D-O-C-K or D-O? D-U-C-K. Okay, D-U-C-K. Yellow and red, right? So, six bricks. All three of you have the same bricks in the bag. So we're going to give you 30 seconds to build a duck. Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> Starting now. Ten seconds left. So the benefit of this particular exercise is what it demonstrates is that nobody has a monopoly on ideas. We often bring this type of an exercise out of groups of one and two hundred people, and what we find is that no two ducks are the same. So even though that we all know what a duck looks like, our, percept our perception of one is very, very different from each other. So what's the difference between each of those ducks that we can see in front of us? The one difference is they're all different. None of them are the same. So even if we did this with 50 or 100 people in that respect, we still would get a different result each time. Now the second exercise I have for the three volunteers is to build as many ducks as you can in 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Now with this particular exercise, when we bring it into primary schools, we get absolutely amazing results in relation to it because their minds are so open and they don't see any rules when you, when you talk to them in relation to things like this. So it will be interesting to see now how many this group will build in 30 seconds. You have 10 seconds left. Okay, you're finished. How many ducks did you build? Three. Three ducks, okay. How about yourself? One. <laughs> one. Like and what about yourself? That's three ducks. Yeah. I did another one. Okay, so that's four, well. four ducks. Well. <laughs> okay, now you have just one piece here, one red piece. Mm -hmm. Is that a duck? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Because Lego Serious Play is all about metaphors. So it's not about the quality of the building or how advanced you are as a Lego builder. It's all about how you can use a brick as a metaphor. So we were in a primary school last week and 
we handed out this particular task. We said, build as many ducks as you can in 30 seconds. And one of the kids in first class built 30 ducks in 30 seconds. 30 ducks. Any idea how it was done? Any ideas? 30 ducks in 30 seconds. Elaine, you're going to show us, aren't you? I am. So, talk us through it. So, that's one duck. Two. Three. Four. <laughs> five. Six. Seven. We get the gist. So, <laughs> so with that, what you'll find is that with regard to you know, giving somebody a task, usually what people will do automatically is that they will deconstruct the first duck before they go to sec build the second duck. Deconstruct the second duck to build the third duck. So we never put those rules in place. There was no rules, but people made up their own rules as they go along, and that's what happens. So when we give this task, let's say, in a primary school, the kids don't add any rules themselves. They build with as much imagination as they possibly can. And, you know, growing up as a child, and I don't know about yourselves, but I grew up in a house where my mother kept telling me, stop looking at that, don't touch that, colour in between the lines. And that erodes your creativity over time. You find yourself in a situation whereby you become less and less creative over time because you have to work within the rules of the game. And sometimes there are no rules, but you're making them up as you go along because they've been, I suppose, they've been stapled into your mind over a certain amount of years. So to tell you, thank you very much for participating. I will, need, I will need someone else to volunteer later on, but I'll come to that in a few minutes' time. Thank you for your participation. I appreciate it. So a background to LEGO Serious Play. LEGO Serious Play was invented by LEGO to solve a problem that they had internally. To go back into the history books of LEGO very quickly, LEGO was invented back in 1932 by a carpenter and it started off as a wooden toy. In 1958, the Lego brick, that plastic brick that we know and love and have in every one of our houses right across the country, with that particular brick, that was trademarked in 1958. And it became a phenomenal, phenomenal tool, construction toy, since then. But in 1992, something radical happened. And it impacted Lego for the first time from a sales perspective. Up until that time, their sales were rocketing year after year with continuous growth. But in 1992, what happened was video games came on the market. I remember myself playing an Amstrad and a Commodore 64 and the start of the Nintendo games. And that put Lego under a lot of pressure very, very quickly. There was a radical change in the market. Their sales were being affected. So they do like most companies do. They went off and they brought in consultants. And those consultants were brought in. Those consultants didn't know an awful lot about their company, but they came in and what they found was that they ended up telling them an awful lot of what they already knew. So they needed to take a different approach to solving the problems within their organization. And they felt, and they said to themselves, well, for the last 50 years, we've been inspiring children to build their dreams. Why don't we start now inspiring our employees to build their vision using the same tools that we've given to kids for 50 years? And that was the thinking behind LEGO Serious Play. It was as simple as that. But the difficult part was, how were they going to achieve it? So what they decided to do at the time was to bring researchers in-house with a view to developing the methodology that we now know as LEGO Serious Play. It went through many, many iterations. Um, up until 2002, so for 10 years it went through many different iterations, many different concepts, many different uh, facilitation methods. But in 2002, it was signed off on and it was made an open source product at the time where LEGO revealed it to the world. And the reason they did it is because it worked unbelievably well for them as an organization. And I suppose more than anything else with LEGO Serious Play, it unleashed the hidden potential and knowledge within their own organization. They were able to find a way of being able to tap into the knowledge base of their own staff, the people that knew their organization best. Not external consultants, not local research houses, not local universities, but instead their staff. And their staff themselves had hundreds of years of combined experience across every team and every department. And they felt that LEGO Serious Play was a way in that they could tap into that. So, it's today, LEGO Serious Play is used by many. 
It's used by these four companies here, to name a few, Google, IKEA, Virgin Atlantic, and Samsung. But it's used by many, many more than that. Organizations involved in the not-for-profit sector, organizations as SMEs, and also organizations in the multinational space. We have also done a lot of work with teams, sports teams, and everything else across the country. Now, what underpins LEGO serious play? I suppose the number one thing that underpins it is the fact that there is no rules approach. There is no wrong and right answer. There is no best or worst. There is no first, second, or third. There's a no rules approach, and it's a non-competitive way of tapping into that hidden talent within your organization. It's based on a number of theories, and those theories include constructionism. And constructionism learning happens exceptionally well when you get people to construct. And the reason for that is very simple. Our brains are wired in 3D, but most of our lives are lived in 2D. So when we want to think about something, we're either getting out a piece of paper and a pen to write it out with, which is 2D, or we're going to a laptop or a, a tablet, and we're trying to construct a solution through that and to record it there. But the problem is there's a mismatch between how our brain operates and how that technology, or lack of technology, operates. So for us to bring us back to a situation whereby our brains are wired in 3D, so we should try and solve the problem in 3D, you use something like Lego. And Lego as a toy and Lego as an educational toy is very, very effective in that respect. The second element of the research that has led to LEGO Series Play today is around the entire area of the brain and the function of the brain. And when you're asked a question and you respond to that verbally, you're only actually using 13% of your brain. But when you're asked a question and you respond to it through constructing something, it increases your brain activity to about 80%. So it's highly effective in that respect. Also, play. When Kids play, they play with no goal in mind. They play with no particular end game. They're having fun. But when adults play, they play with a goal in mind. And the use of storytelling and the use of metaphors are both key elements of play from an adult perspective. The third element is imagination. And there's a number of different aspects to the imaginative process that we use in LEGO Serious Play. They range from the descriptive imagination, where we're taking time to describe what we've built after we've constructed it. We use creativity in the process to come up with outside the brick thinking, to take a different approach to how we solve problems, and then to challenge the imagination also. And really what we're doing there is we're deconstructing the way we usually solve a problem, and we're taking a brand new approach to it. So we're using a blue sky approach to solving a problem in that respect. When you combine those three particular aspects, you end up with what's called strategic imagination. So why do organizations use LEGO Serious Play? They're vast, but for the purpose of today and the well-being focus, I'm going to just limit them to five. Firstly, communication. So what we find from a LEGO Serious Play facilitated workshop is that we get 100% engagement. And the reason that we get 100% engagement is that there is no right and wrong, and there is no best or worst. It's a level playing field. So you can have an organization that participates in this, and everyone from a receptionist to a cleaner to a managing director to a financial controller can take part in the same group. But the process itself involves somebody coming along and building a model to solve a problem, and then telling us about that particular model. And by them telling us about the model, the, the spotlight isn't on them, but instead it is on the model itself. So that takes an awful lot of the attention away from what they're doing, and it makes them far more comfortable to communicate with us in that respect. Health and well-being strategies, they have become very, very important over the last number of years for organizations of all sizes right across the country. We've been brought in by many companies to assist them in relation to the development of a health and well-being strategy within their organization. So many companies have used LEGO Serious Play as a way to be able to identify what the issues are within the organization. And then from there even to go forward to, with a view to getting as many ideas and suggestions from team members as to how they can be solved through a health and well-being strategy also. Organizational culture is also something that is an emerging trend out there. So from a cultural perspective, organizations are all the time looking at how they can make 
and improve their overall culture within the organization itself. Again, we're brought in to do an awful lot of fact finding on that by using the methodology through LEGO Serious Play. Because it's done in a relaxed environment, because it's done in a fun environment, people are far more engaging and people are far more inclined to provide you with the information that you require by doing so. Talent management, whether it's attracting talent, managing talent, or retaining talent, talent management is an absolute buzzword when it comes to LEGO Serious Play today. We're brought in by organizations of all size to assist them in that respect. Um, even at an exit stage within the organization, where if there's a particular group that are exiting an organization at any one time, we're brought in with, with a view to identifying what are the core reasons why and how can we get them to share as much information as possible with them. Companies have tried many different ways of trying to get those that are leaving an organization to communicate with them as to the reasons why they're leaving. They haven't been very successful with it until they've tried LEGO Serious Play in that respect. Enhanced productivity. Productivity was on the agenda right through the day here today at the conference. And productivity is something that comes about when people feel engaged, when people feel listened to, when people feel that they're part of the overall plan. Because LEGO Serious Play guarantees 100% engagement in whatever project they're facilitating, you can be assured that everybody is bought into it because everybody has had their voice heard. We've all gone to meetings with 20 people present, but only two or three people will talk and probably dominate the meeting, where you have 75 or 80% of people not engaging at all, maybe not opening their mouth during the course of the meeting, not putting any ideas forward. We all know they have ideas, because none of us have a monopoly on them. But it's difficult to get the ideas from them, very difficult. With this particular approach, it's guaranteed to get the ideas from them. So if we can get the ideas from everybody in the room, everyone has an opportunity to build a model of what their idea is. They communicate with us through the model. And then from there, that's built into the overall plan by the organization. They feel part of the overall solution. So how does LEGO Serious Play work? Well, there's four core steps to the process itself. I've touched on some of them already. The first one is when we meet with a group, the first thing we do is we set a challenge. So that's agreed with the company, with the HR director or manager up front, and they will tell us exactly what they want to get out of that particular session. So we'll facilitate the session. We're not consultants. We're not advisors. Our job is to come in with a view to having a clean sheet, identifying exactly what the issue is, posing the challenge, and then getting the staff to build a model that signifies what their solution to that challenge is, or sometimes what the challenge is itself, so we can clarify that. So the challenge could be, how do we improve the culture within this organization? It could be, how do we, deal, how do we overcome the conflict within the team that we're working in? How do we deal with the high attrition rate and the, high, the, the low retention rate of staff within the organization? So again, that challenge is posed, and the second stage of the process is the staff themselves, the participants that are present, they will construct the model. So we give them access to the LEGO Serious Play kit, and from that, they will then construct what they feel is the solution to it. Sometimes we're looking to identify this, the problem, other times we're looking to identify the solution, and sometimes we're looking to identify both over the course of a session, depending on how long it's for, and depending how many are present. So the construction phase, is given to the group to come up with individual models of what they think that solution or that problem is within the organization. So they will then construct the model, let's say in five minutes. In that case, everybody takes part, everybody builds the model, and then from there, everybody gets an opportunity to interact with the group and to explain to the group what is going on within their model. So they will, they're comfortable in that space because they're holding the model up here, the spotlight isn't on their face, it's on the model, and they're speaking about what the model is. They're explaining why they feel that this is the problem or this is the solution, and they feel, and they're able to communicate as well in terms of how you would go about that. So it's a great way to be able to get a group to collaborate with each other, to share ideas with each other, and one, one of the pieces of feedback that constantly come back to us is that 70% of the ideas that come out of a Bricks, uh, Bricks for Biz LEGO Series Play Workshop are new. The organization was not aware of them. 
beforehand. So after the construction of the, of the models themselves, which are metaphors, we then move on to the sharing. So each person in the group has an opportunity to share their story about that model. And then from there, from a group perspective, there's a group discussion to reflect on what has been built and the ideas and solutions that have come out of that session itself. Uh, many notes are taken in relation to that. Again, nobody has a monopoly on ideas, as I said. So you have a situation whereby if there's 15 in the group, you might have 12 new ideas coming to the fore. There will always be a little bit of duplication, which is to be expected, but 75% of the ideas are new and individual. I'm looking for one volunteer at this stage to interact with us with a view to creating a solution to a problem that you have within your own organization. If anyone is happy to do that with us, we'd be delighted to work with you for three minutes. Any volunteers? Sorry, can I get you? <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to ask both John and Elaine here to talk us through a particular model that they have created earlier. So maybe Elaine, you can go first for us, please. Okay. So this is a model that represents myself, represents who I am, who things are important to me. Very driven individual, and I steer the way for my family and my and my own business. This is me here with the dark hair and a coffee cup in my hand. I'm rarely found without one. This here is my love of food, and over here is my heart and soul, which is what I put into everything that I do. I built it alongside my integrity, which is incredibly important to me. Over here, I have my career, um, 20 odd years within the corporate world, where I have um, gained lots of nuggets and jewels of experience, knowledge, network, and that helps to keep everything rosy in my garden as I move forward through the next steps of my career. Thank you very Thank much, you. Elaine. Hello, John. So, <laughs> this is, I suppose, it's a little bit more detailed than Elaine, but it's a different story that I'm telling. So, my job as a Lego Series Play facilitator is to work with companies who are, I suppose, I have a monkey here at the back who's representing the, the headwinds that are coming into the company. There's a little bit of chaos within the company, a lot of firefighting. Some people are looking at the tools within the company, how they will do things. Other people, when they hear the sort of first sign of problems, they put their hands in the air, they don't want to know about it, or they start looking out the window. So my job as a facilitator, taking the Lego Series Play methodology, is to, I suppose, bring people along the pathway to explore the different tools that they have at their disposal within the company by the people, for the people, in terms of how they can solve problems. Um, on the left-hand side here, you'll see I have a cow. Now this cow, can, for me, it represents we have a more peaceful company. It's working better together. Other people mention, say, it's a cash cow. So it can be whatever you want it to be. Um, we have the tower here, which have two owls on top of it. I use them as they're my wise owls. It's the Lego Series Play. It could also be a tower. So a person can be in the ivory tower. So I suppose the key point for me as a facilitator is it doesn't matter what the quality of the model represents. It's what it what it looks like, it's what it represents to me as a person. I can tell the story, I can share the story, and I can get anyone in the audience just to walk through the model. You'll use a different language or a different terminology. We get an understanding of the message that we're conveying as a LEGO Series Play facilitator. Thank you, John. So that gives you an overview in terms of what a, a landscape will look like on a particular model. Uh, just a, a quick story on the basis of well-being. We did some work there at the start of January with a company here in Dublin and uh, there was issues in relation to the culture within the organization itself. There was a, a merger had taken place about two months before that. Uh, both businesses had a very different way of operating from a, a process perspective, and even from a CSR perspective. There was a lot of uncertainty in the company at the time about roles, duplication of roles, about crossover on roles, and people really didn't know where they stood, and there was a lot of uncertainty about it, but nobody was really coming forward and telling their story. Nobody was expressing themselves to HR at the time. So there was a lot of friction in the company between management and staff. So we were brought in on an independent level to work with the staff with a view to facilitating a number of sessions to identify exactly what the worries and the concerns and the issues were. And secondly, then to identify what they felt management could do to be able to absolve those and to overcome those issues. 
It was done in a confidential manner. It was done without putting anyone's names to it. And then from there, we brought a, a report back to management in relation to it. And it was very, very enlightening for them to be able to take those nuggets of information direct from the employees in a very confidential manner, but in a very, very honest manner as well. So it was done in a, in a way that we facilitated independently. And now that particular HR team is working at overcoming some of those issues that are in there today with a view to restoring some confidence back into the management team and the organisation. So that's just a quick story that I felt I would share with you today because it was relevant to what today is all about. So we spoke about the core process. The pro core process being challenge, set the challenge, then leave the participants work on it through constructing a model. Then from there, they would share their story with us in terms of what that model signifies for them as a metaphor. And then from there, the reflection exercise in relation to it. Moving on from there, this is a very interesting uh, diagram. Because what it shows up here at the very top on the right-hand side is the building individual models and stories which we've just covered. But that then leads into building shared models and stories. And what that basically means is that where you have a situation where there's a team of a participant, maybe 10 participants, let's say, for instance, there's seven to eight individual models that there's no duplication in there. For those models that are duplicated, they will combine with each other, and they will form one model. And then from there, the, all of the other models will go into what's called a landscape. And those particular, that particular landscape will represent each and every idea that has been brought forward by the participants. So the participants will then gain confidence from that in knowing that my voice was heard and was listened to, and it's represented here now in what's called this landscape. Then from there, we make connections. So there's lots of different types of connections in a LEGO Serious Play set. You won't see this type of connection in any LEGO set that you'll buy in, in Smith's Toys. These are different types of connections. Some of them are very strong. Some of them are very weak. Some of them are very flexible. Some of them are very rigid all depending on what the relationship is between those particular ideas back into the organization itself. Then from there, once those connections are in place, we build an overall system in terms of how we would implement whatever ideas and solutions have been raised at that particular session. And then from there, we play emergence, uh, emergence and decisions. So we look at the consequences of implementing each of those. We look at the resources that go into implementing each of those. We look at the the effect within the organization and some of the, some of the uh, decisions that are made and how they would affect other elements within the organization itself. And then from there, finally, we will extract some simple guiding principles in terms of where we're moving forward from there. What some organizations do in that respect is that they take that system that has been built and they put it into a glass case and they leave it at reception. Other companies build it and they leave it inside in a boardroom. Other companies take photographs of it before it's deconstructed and put those photographs up in front of those participants that have taken part within that group exercise itself. Each company will have their own approach in relation to doing it. But I think one thing that's common between all organizations is that they recognize the input that everybody has put into that. They recognize that each person's ideas are as valued as everybody else's, and they take those into consideration in relation to solving the problems that have been outlined. I'm going to play one last short video for you before we finish. Thank you.